This is Craig Marker. Today we're going to talk about the one-arm strict barbell press. I want to talk a little bit about what it is first. So of course it's with a barbell. So we've got a seven foot barbell with one arm and we're going to have a lot of movement with that barbell. It can tilt, it can pan, and it can roll. So it can go in a lot of, it can go in three dimensions. So that's going to add an extra challenge to it. It's a strict press. So we're going to go basically straight up and down. Pavel Satsulin in Power to the People talked about a side press where there's a little bit of a side motion uh, uh, so you get a little bit more leverage underneath it. It's not that and it's not a bent press and a bent press is maybe not really a press where the bar is going to be here and you're going to get the body underneath it and then stand up with it. So it's a strict one arm press. It's not a push press either. So we're not going to use any momentum from our body to press it up. We're going to strict press it. All right, let's talk about the why of the movement. So this movement's really good to integrate the stabilizer muscles together so that they're constantly working to stabilize that shoulder joint. I like it because of that range of motion of the barbell. It makes it more challenging. And to me, it's a prehabilitation movement, a movement that's gonna prevent me from having injuries. Let's talk about the how and what you're gonna need for this movement. First of all, you're gonna need a barbell. A typical barbell is seven feet long and 20 kilograms. It's a pretty heavy load to start with. So if you've got some pressing experience, maybe you can press 20 kilograms, which is great. Um, but the challenge of the movement is gonna make it a little bit more difficult. So you might wanna start with something a little lighter. There are 15 kilogram little lighter uh, barbells that you might use. You can use a curl bar. That's still gonna give you a little bit of that range of motion. You can try to find a lighter barbell if possible. Second thing you're gonna need, if you're gonna add weight to it, get some really good weightlifting clips. We don't want the spring clips because they could, they could uh, slide off of it. We want some really good heavy duty aluminum clips for this. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about the details of how to do it. And one of the things that's gonna be really important whenever you're training yourself with a new movement is to practice that movement over and over again so you build that neurological connection. So one of the things when we get under the bar the first time, that's going to be almost a rep itself because we're going to have to get really tight under a barbell because that bar can go in any direction. Our body needs to be really stable underneath that barbell. So what I'm going to talk about doing with this, I'm going to think in my head, I'm going to think about tightening my thighs and I think about it by lifting up my kneecaps. So if I lift up my kneecaps, I'm going to think about tightening my glutes and I'm going to think about having a coin between my cheeks and I'm going to tighten my glutes and then I'm going to tighten my abs and I'm going to think about pulling my belly button towards my face. So I'm going to think about those three movements and that's going to cause me to get really tight throughout the core so I have a nice stable base to hold this barbell. So when I get under the bar, I'm also going to squeeze the bar really tight with the hand that I'm using. I'm gonna also squeeze the other hand to add extra tension to the body. So my core and stable base is set and I'm also building a lot of tension. With building that tension, there's a lot to think about. And if you're gonna to try to lift a heavy weight, you don't wanna be thinking about these other things. So what I would suggest is to practice getting tight under the bar at least 100 times or throwing out a random number, but at least many, many times practice that. So that is already ingrained in your procedural memory before you lift the bar up for the first time. Now let's talk about how to lift the bar up. If you have a rack, it makes it very convenient. You can put the bar at the height that you want. You get under the, rack, under the bar in the rack, and then you're gonna press, uh, get tight underneath it, and you're gonna stand up and you get, be ready to press the bar. So the rack is kind of an easy way to do it. We're, if we want though, if you don't have a rack at home, but you have a barbell, you can pick up the barbell from the floor. So what I suggest you do is you grab one end of the barbell, you flip that up a little bit, lift it up a little bit. You're gonna find the center of the bar with the hand you're gonna press with. If you've got the knurls in the center, it makes it a bit easier. You find that center, and then with your other hand, you're gonna find a, help balance that as you lift the bar up onto your shoulder. Again, think about that tightness. You wanna be tight under the bar when you lift that up. So from there, once you've got the bar in this position, you're gonna think about where you're pressing 
range of motion is. I suggest you start with it at about a 45 degree turn. Again, you're going to have an individual, you're going to have different internal, external rotation of your shoulder. You're going to find the right path. Some people are straight up and down. Some people are really back to way to the back, uh, externally rotated. I'm going to suggest you start 45 degrees, kind of feel how that press range feels, but you'll find where to put that bar. And again, do things slowly. If you've got a barbell, you're not going to want to move and, and twist it very quickly. Let's talk about how often to do it. So with this, I think you can integrate this into your press program and this be your press program. Once you get a, a good movement, this can be a really challenging exercise and you can build a lot of strength with it. You can probably press as well with this as you can with other things if you learn the tension and your stabilizers are really set. Um, I do this quite frequently. If I don't do these, I feel that my shoulders start to get a, a little wonky to, to use a non-technical term. Um, with the kettlebell you've got quite a bit of that range of the motion but you don't have the weight out in front of you so that that leverage is really helpful with the barbell. So I think these are great as a prehabilitation movement. I would mix this with a diet of bottoms up presses as well as a lot of Turkish get-ups. The Turkish get-ups are also building the stabilizer as you work through that range of motion.